Well, we bring one of our great friends of the show, Ken Laban, uh, back onto this. And uh, I spoke to you this morning about it, mate. I'm still uh, still in shock. Uh, I, I I just don't really know what to say, Ken. Yes, we all are, uh, mate. At the sad passing of um, of Willie Lossie overnight in um, in Cape Town, only 55 um, years old, and somebody that's been um, he's been part of the sporting fabric of uh, radio in New Zealand and television um, in New Zealand and around the world for um, I think the best part of 15 years. I think yep. he's been a, yep. uh, been in television. Uh, and as you know, as you, we both well know, he's a larger-than-life uh, character, elegant, eloquent, extremely entertaining, um, and a very, very sad loss for somebody, um, for somebody so popular and so loved and admired around the world. And uh, yes, yeah, so it's a very sad day um, today. Maybe, you know, Willie was, even though he was younger than me, uh, he was somebody I looked up to and admired because. You know, there are not many Indigenous and not very many Pacific commentators that um, have strove proudly on the world scene um, like he has over the course of his uh, brilliant and, uh, and illustrious career in broadcasting. And I'm glad uh, that... Uh, time yeah. with the HS- Sorry, keep going, mate. You know, his, his time with the HSBC World Series um, Sevens where he's been involved in some of the most magical moments. Um, with that, he's been a long-time caller of the world under 20 uh, championships and of course he called the 2017 uh, Black Ferns victory over uh, Ireland to secure the World Cup in front of a packed house um, as well so you know, you look overall at the um, at his full body of work um, he was uh, he made an enormous uh, contribution and I was very very fortunate uh, as well as obviously working alongside him at, uh, at Sky uh, the last couple of Pacifica games we've worked on together in Papua New Guinea and in up here in 2019. Um, as well, we were in Port Moresby in 2015 where he, you know, he much, much loved personality uh, in the Pacific. You could imagine what the people were like in Papua New Guinea if only had the chance to listen and watch them on uh, on television. And it was the same when we were in up here um, as well, given how much they loved their rugby in, uh, in Samoa, so he was in Cape Town for the sevens. He was supposed to be part of the World Rugby Commentary um, crew, and you know it was tragic for me to get the phone call from uh, Carl Tanana uh, this morning. So thank you for the opportunity to acknowledge and pay tribute to um, to a wonderful man who's made a huge contribution to um, to broadcasting. Yeah, look, uh, you know, just it's such a shock. I mean, you know, exchange some messages with KT as well, and um, uh, you know, when you when you talk about that, one of the great things about sport, Ken, and you know, I love this, mate, is that to me it breaks down all kinds of barriers. Uh, when we're at Radio Sport, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that was he 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 was the first brown face that became you know a regular part of the on air lineup, and you know, it's only now that I'm actually thinking about it, when you say and use the words that you've used, what it, what that actually means to me. I mean, there's a white boy, I'm just thinking, hey, this, guy, this guy's got lots of potential. I spent lots of time with him, yacked with him a lot about it, about how to go on air, about how to prepare a show, all of that kind of stuff. And, and I love the fact his language was brilliant, mate. I mean, he just, he could twist words around and bum them up and all of that kind of stuff, but he did it with a smile on his face and you knew what he was saying. So, but, you know, now that you actually bring that out in it, I mean, that's why I've got so much respect for yourself and KT, and I've, I've said to you a lot, mate, that, you know, you know, Sky TV, you know, they need to use all you guys so much more and use you just outside of the Pacifica Games and things, and I felt that like he was one of those guys that break, broke through that to start with. Yeah, so we need, we need people like, um, you know, and prior to Willie, there wasn't anybody. And subsequent to Willie, there hasn't been anybody either. So, you know, his time in, in radio sport, and, and I know that he learned a lot from you about preparation uh, and about notes and about, you know, not being afraid to poke the bear um, and not being afraid to be controversial in front of big, uh, the big issues. And it did get him in um, into hot water at times, as you and I both know mm. uh, and have both been familiar with. But we need to have people that are like that, that will push the envelope um, and that will challenge things. And, you know, from a party figure perspective, he's a beacon of hope, Martin to, um, you know, young people thinking about entering broadcasting school uh, when they see somebody like Willie on radio, on television, doing those big games, doing the international games, broadcasting from both New Zealand and around the world, 
that's what inspires young people um, to get involved uh, in our industry. And similar, you know, similarly yourself with uh, your talent and your enormous uh, career that you've had publicly as well. You know, obviously none of us, and Willie's a reminder of that today, are going to be around um, forever. So we need to do what we do so that we do inspire coming generations. And I've certainly had examples of that when I've been in Willie's company um, around the world and around the Pacific. So, you know, not only will he be lost to um, to broadcasting, he's a huge loss to the community mm. and indigenous communities that looked up to him and used him as a role model for so long. He's got a uh, holiday home up at um, Tokoro Beach there and the Tua Tua Pub. I don't know whether you've ever been up there or ever spent any time up there, but they loved him up there. He was just a guy that came down. His house was just walking distance, mate. He used to come down just walking to the pub and a lot of pe- people have been sending me photos of that they took with him. He's like a real celebrity and everything else. But, mate, I just loved him and I said before, Ken, that he's one of those kind of people that if you bump into him during the day, your day's a hell of a lot better because of it. Yes, exactly. Well, I remember one day when uh, he got on a plane from Auckland to Wellington just wearing a waistcoat, um, obviously in trousers, but no shirt, no T-shirt, um, <laughs> showing, showing off his... <laughs> so, and we're all, we're all travelling as sky crew, so there's 30 of us uh, on the plane, and he must have taken an hour to put his bag up on the... Um, <laughs> I think so. Good show, was, you know. So when we talk about a, when you talk about a larger than life, uh, but I said, no wonder you're divorced, boy. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Yeah, Thank really you. humble as well, Thank man. You. And you know, and uh, and also, let's not forget his career as well, where he played for Auckland. He played, and then he went over to North Harbour. He tells a great story about you know he was at practice one day. He told me a great story, and he, and everyone ran off to go and do something, and he's just left standing there. And Graham Henry just looked at him and just said, "Yeah, well, what?" He said he was playing for North Harbour the next week after that, but he played for Tonga proudly as well. And yeah, he's going to be sadly missed, mate. He's going to be missed by everybody. So you know, I, you know, it's one of those awful things that. You know, we've, we've lost a few. We lost Dave Campbell. We lost Lego. And um, just a reminder that, you know, you just got to enjoy every single day of your life, mate. I really feel for KT too. Hopefully pass on some best to him. It must be a real shock, mate. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that for you, mate. Thank you so much for joining us, Ken. All right. That's Ken Laban with us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just talking about Willie Lusse. And um, if uh, you haven't heard the news, sadly passing away overnight in South Africa. You are on the platform. Our number is 0800 332283. Um, if you're just uh, wondering that, there's perhaps just a little less enthusiasm in the voice today. Uh, i, I got to be honest, I'm actually still in a, a bit of a state of shock, uh, really, after hearing that news this morning. And when the news broke about Willie this morning, um, none of us were were able to say anything or... or <clears throat> or go public or anything with the information because his family hadn't been, hadn't been told at that stage. So you kind of sort of hold it in and then it all breaks around about 2 o'clock. And so just uh, I just kind of feel a bit weird. I'm, I'm just explaining it to you. I just kind of feel just a little bit weird. Craig uh, coming joins us. Craig, and I know that um, you spent a lot of time around the big man as well, mate. Yeah, good afternoon, mate. Yeah, I did. I was more fortunate enough to uh, do rugby commentary with Willie and got to know him and when you... You know, when you're commentating, as you know, Marty, you're, you're sort of travelling around the country. Uh, obviously, the job's one part, but it, it's sitting around and having dinner and a, and a Diet Coke together is when you, you spend, you know, sp- those special times and you actually get to know each other really well. And, yeah, when like you, when I found out, um, you sort of, you take a deep breath and you, wow, and I suppose in some ways you do a little bit of self-reflection. I mean, I, I had a close incident a couple of years ago myself. Yes, and right, yeah. You just realise you, you're fortunate and... Um, you know, really sad. And, I mean, it was only the weekend, but he was sitting there listening and commentating yes. rugby. It, yeah. It's, and, I mean, it doesn't solve this one, but it just shows that life is really precious. We've got to make sure we enjoy our days and we don't take things too seriously, you know. We, we just can treat people with care. Yeah. Because that's the most important thing. That really is the most important thing, but let's make sure we enjoy it because, you know, unfortunately, this just reiterates it again. It, it can go away bloody quickly. Yeah, look, and you know, to be honest, uh, you know, it's kind of brought back a few memories from different events last year for myself and, uh, yeah. you know, and just, yeah. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm you know, I just feel, I just feel quite shocked about it, about it still. I mean, a 55-year-old man who's as fit and healthy as he is and, um, you know, I could I could list a hundred people in the world that you know I'd like to die today, to be perfectly honest. But you know, <laughs> you know, um, and and yet somebody like that, you think they just offers so much and brings so much. And and to be honest, Craig, you know, the great thing, 
Great thing I loved about his broadcasting, mate, was I, I started the show by saying it with all the love in my heart, people. He butchered the English language like no New Zealand broadcaster has. <laughs> and he did it with a plomb, and he did it with a sense of humour, and he did it with a sense of defiance, and he didn't give a stuff about it. You know, I mean, one of the favourites for me was talking about the administration, you know, of rugby, the rugby union administration being on the gravy stroke instead of the gravy train. I'll never forget it. I just about drove into the median barrier on the motorway, mate. And, oh, yeah. You know, you can, you'd, you'd go up to him and you'd meet him afterwards at work and you'd go, dude, did you got any idea what you just said? Um, and he would just laugh in that big thing and that big moustache of his and that big bald bonce of his and, uh, you know, as I say, an irre- yeah. you know, kind of irrepressible dude, eh? Oh, he, I mean, I remember the first game I commentated with him was in Southland, and he turned up with more jackets and scarves, <laughs> and he had, he had double leather gloves. And yeah. I turned up with these big, you know, Norseware gloves that were not flash. Look, he said, look, Craig, first thing I'm going to teach you is how to dress. And I was looking at him going, really? Well, really? We're in the deep south. Yeah. It's, it's about being thick, warm in one layer, not six. But you talked about the, I mean, one of the great challenges in, you know, in, in our... Commentary is obviously um, pronunciation, and for me, it's you know the Pacifica names and the, the Samoan names, the Tongan names, and, and doing that. And he said, "Craig, really simply, say it as fast, say it like you mean it, and if anyone challenges, say Ken Laven told you to say it that way." <laughs> and um, yeah, he said so. And because ev- everyone believes Ken, That's everyone it. believes Ken's the maestro, yep. and he's the master at yep. that. And if you say Ken told me. We get away with it. Mate, yeah, I use... Big I, smile, you're right. I've used Uncle Ken a million times, mate, and he was on the show with us before, <laughs> so... All right, Craig, let's talk about the cricket. Again, people, that if you've got anything you'd like to uh, offer or a message you'd like to send, uh, by all means, um, you know, you get to know... Finally, I'll just actually say this. Look, for a lot of people who, who listen, and I'm, I'm a great listener of radio and always have been, that you get to know people and their voices on air, you feel like you know them, and even if you don't actually know them... Uh, to me, the greatest um, compliment you can ever get paid as a broadcaster is if you bump into somebody somewhere or somebody comes up and says hello to you and they say to you, oh, wow, you're just like the person on the radio. You're just like, and there's no, <laughs> and you know what I mean, because what you're trying to do is you're saying, hey, I exaggerate certain bits of your personality and stuff like that. But at the same time, you want to be that real and you want to actually be a person that other people can actually relate to. And I've always thought that about him as well, that what you saw, what you get, what you hear is what you get. Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, often people tell us that you look different than you sound. I Always. don't know that, what they mean by that, Marty. But, yeah, you're right. And, I mean, um, the greatest, you know, compliment I always talk about is that uh, people are kind of aligned. They don't have to agree with you, but... Um, I, I always love it when you see, you know, I drive, I listen to you, Marty, and, and I sometimes nod, and you see you're at the lights and you're nodding away or you're shaking your head, and, and that means in the roles that we do, we're engaging with our listeners, yep. and, and that's really important that we do that, and you're right. Now, I always remember Woody on like, Radio Sport. Gee was he was controversial. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it? I think it was afternoon spot. And he, but, you know, again, is honesty a good thing or a bad thing? Um, and part of our job is to hold people accountable. Part of our job is to to educate, it's all of the above. And if we've got people nodding and we've got people listening yeah. and they're engaged, well, then we're doing our job, which yeah. is really important. Absolutely. And I always still throw in, we've got to be respectful and we've got to care. Uh, Tony Johnson, who joins us. Tony, you're in Napier at the moment, and I suppose you're as, as much just upset and, and shocked as the rest of us, mate. Well, pretty stunned, actually, Martin. I mean, it was only uh, last week that with farewell to a, a great friend, David Lee, yes. to, to hear this morning about... Um, Willie passing away, I mean, you know, this is a guy who worked in the fitness industry um, and uh, to hear that he died of a heart attack is just just absolute uh, shock because the other thing too, he wasn't just a a colleague. I mean, Willie had been a friend of mine, um, well, since back when he was playing um, and he he gave the the toast to the bride and groom at uh, my wedding to Sarah. Oh, wow. You know, it's uh, it, it's a shock, and, and to be honest, mate, I, ha- I haven't really come to grips with it. No. Yeah, the same, you know. You, it's, uh, <laughs> first thing I think is it's not real tone. That's the first thing I think, and then, you yeah. kind of, you know, you kind of feel like I, d- I don't want to know this and I don't want to hear it, and, you know, and then obviously it, it is real in your thoughts and all your heart breaks and you think, oh, you know, it's, uh, poor kids and everything else. And But we've had, um, so far, we've had um, Ken Laban on the program and, and Dolly and also Craig come in talking about it, and all of us sharing a few memories. I mean, he was... <laughs> He was such a good dude. I, 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 I keep smiling because every time I used to bump into him, he was one of those people that he just uplifted my day, mate. Well, I first met him when I came back from the UK in, uh, or the end of 92. Beginning in 93, I started uh, calling the rugby in Auckland. And I remember, you know, there'd, there'd been 
particularly around the 91 World Cup, relations with the, the media and the players, and that weren't great. Uh, the, the, the players sort of didn't really trust the media, and, and it, it was a fairly dismissive sort of approach that a lot of them had. But uh, I came back here, and you, you go along with a couple of trainings, and here are these guys who you know, far more engaging. I think Richard Turner was, uh, you know, at the yeah, same time, he'd yeah. sort of come onto the scene. And But Willie was actually a guy who came and introduced himself. Uh, I knew that he'd been the head boy at, at, at Kirlston and that there was a bit about him. But this was a guy who had a completely different attitude. Um, it was like, let's, let's engage, uh, let's have a good, um, you know, be on good terms. Uh, and, and probably recognising that, you know, that there might be possibilities down the line, you know, if you, if you do have good relationships with people in the media, but we, we became really good friends. In fact, uh, there was a point during the sort of the, the mid to late 90s where there was a group of us, Richard Turner, Willie, uh, Angus Cooper, who was a former New Zealand uh, uh, hammer thrower, Mike Barry, yes. you know, Mr. Barry as in Hillary Barry, um, and we used to get together at the end of the weekends and discuss, you know, what sort of disaster our weekend had been or whether <laughs> it had been a good weekend, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we became... We became known as the Lonely Boys Club. Brilliant. Because one of their teammates walked in on us one, and we were all sitting there, and, and, and you know, he was all loved up and had the in-laws there and whatever, and he saw us there, and he goes, oh, what's this, the Lonely Boys Club? And it stuck, and we were very proud of it. And, um, you know, we actually had a, a, a night out together not long before I got married, and the last time I saw Willie, we were talking about the Lonely the lonely Boys Club. And so um, we, we've, you know, we've, we've lost a... A, a mate, but he, you know, he, he, one of the one of the originals. Look, and Ken was saying as well, and I love talking to Ken Laban because he just puts such a different perspective on everything for me every time I talk to him. And he's saying that, you know, the fact that he's a Pacifica man doing this job, one of the very few, one of the very first to do it, and how inspiring that is for a generation of young Polynesian men and women who can say, hey, look at that guy and go, hey, you know. Uh, I can do that, and especially, Tone, when, I don't need to tell you, but, you know, the, the Polynesian influence on our rugby especially, to have, a, you know, a guy that is Tongan international and such a big personality as that, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a statement, if nothing else, isn't it? Yeah, and, I, look, I remember when it started because he went up to Japan and he was one of the original guys that when rugby went professional, uh, he, he went up to Japan. Him and I, Norm Broughton was another one, went up at the same time that they didn't get super rugby contracts. So they uh, chose to go and, and, and play rugby in Japan. Of course, he very much got uh, very immersed in, yes. in uh, you know thing, things up there. Um, but he turned up one year at Hong Kong with a team called the Aliens, and they used to play in the tens. And I was up there with TV3, and it was a typical disorganised sort of setup where you get up there and you find that half the people are supposed to turn up haven't. And we were short of comments people, and the boss said to me, "Can you find someone?" And well, we I, I, the first person I thought of was Willie, and so Willie came along, and he did his first commentary gigs at the Hong Kong Sevens with us. Wow. In 1998, it was, and you know it was amazing because you could tell he'd been uh, sitting up in bed, you know, late at night, uh, thinking up, you know, a few lines or a few things to say. So straight away, he had this very diligent attitude to the job where he wasn't just going to turn up and open his mouth and see what fell out of it. Yeah, right. He was going to put some thought into it, and that really set him on the path to the job that he had, where he became a very valuable and very versatile member of our of our team. Tony, it was only last weekend, mate, he was calling Northland versus uh, Auckland and that historic win for the Tanifa up at uh, what I call it, Okota Park, but obviously it's not that anymore, but I mean, that's what yeah. I was so shocked today, I just thought, hang on a second, I was talking to Lachlan and I said, wasn't he calling a game on the weekend? I'm sure I heard his voice. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, and then he went off to Cape Town um, and I think he, he was really uh, happy because for a while, you know, he'd been working on the seven circuit for a while and a few things happened and, and he wasn't getting as many opportunities there. And he, he loved, uh, you know, doing the sevens tournaments and he, be, you know, he was very adept at it. Um, and so he was, you know, he basically got back onto the, uh, the seven scene and uh, he was well fired up about it um, and really looking forward to it. And I, I, from my understanding, uh, you know, he and KT just popped out yeah. At, uh, dinner and and uh, and then uh, the, by the next morning he he, did, he was wasn't with us anymore. It's just and I feel so much for Carl, yes, uh, same and for Steve Gamerson in particular, who you know Willie as his 
mate and fellow Kiwi and, you know, um, great friend and colleague and, and Steve, who, who is the, the, you know, producer, stroke director of, you know, the World Rugby yeah, Seven. Super uh, bad, right? Yeah. What, the, what it must be, uh, you know, how difficult it must be for them. Yeah. <laughs> Very sad day, mate. I appreciate your time. Um, yeah, I don't know else, don't know else what to say, Tone. I really don't. So thank you so much for Yeah, joining. well, as I say, mate, it's going to hit me like a ton of bricks at some point at the moment. I just, you know, I, I'm, I'm having a bit of difficulty processing. But rest assured, Martin, I've lost a very good friend. Thank you so much for joining us, Tony. Appreciate that enormously.